You want to make a modded Minecraft server to play Minecraft mods with your friends in 1.20.6, and this is the video for you. However, the server that we're starting in this video is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you would invite over to your house. That's because it's hosted on your own computer and your own internet. And it being hosted on your own internet, it means anyone who gets the IP address of this server can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. On top of that, it is using your own computer, and I'll be honest, modded Minecraft Minecraft servers require a really good computer with a lot of RAM and a very, very good CPU in order to actually play consistently without any lag. Last but not least, you will need to port forward and, and do some decently technical stuff in order to get your modded server up and running. However, what if you don't want to do any of that, but you still want to play modded Minecraft with your friends? Well, luckily, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below to break down .xyz slash simple to start a 24-hour DDoS protected modded Minecraft server for you and your friends. At Simple Game Hosting, you don't have to worry about your computer's hardware because it's hosted on Simple Game Hosting's hardware. You don't have to worry about security and it being on your IP address and all that stuff because it's on Simple Game Hosting's IP address. Your IP address is not public in any way. And you don't have to worry about having technical skills and stuff like that. As long as you can upload files, you can add mods to a Simple Game Hosting server. Plus, you don't even have to upload files if you use a mod pack because Simple Game Hosting has over 100 mod packs with one click installation. Literally, you just select the mod pack, click install, and you're good to go. It's now on your server. All you've got to do is join it. And should you have any issues along the way, let's say you add a mod, you try to start the server, it's not starting. Well, there is an expert live chat support team there to help you out and fix those issues if they do occur on your server. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown of XYC slash simple and start a mod in Minecraft server the simple way. Nevertheless, what if you don't want to do that? What if you want to self-host a server on your own computer? Well, that's where this comes in. This is in the description down below. It's the second link down below. And we're going to be making a Forge server in this video. There's also Fabric and NeoForge. If you'd rather start one of those servers, guess what? Go search the channel because we have guides on Fabric servers and on NeoForge servers. So no matter what kind of modded server you want to start, we've got you covered, but for this video in 1.20.6, we're going to be covering Forge because it is still currently the most popular mod loader. Nevertheless, once you're here, you want to go ahead and scroll down and click the Download Forge button. Anyone who joins your server is going to need all the mods installed locally as well, by the way, so this guide is helpful for them because it will show them how to install Forge locally and get the mods added locally, which is something they'll need to do. Every mod that's on the server also needs to be installed locally in your local mods folder in order to join, and that's for anyone who joins the server needs every mod in the local mods folder. That's why mod packs are so amazing for servers because you start a server and just tell your friend to download the mod pack and they can join. But nonetheless, once you're here, go ahead and scroll down and click the download forge button to go to the official forge download page where you want to make sure you select 1.20 and 1.20.6 on the left hand side. Once you see Minecraft 1.20.6 here, come under download latest and click on installer. That will then take us off to add focus where stop, don't click anything on this page. Just put your hands in the air and wait about 10 seconds. After about 10 seconds, a red skip button will appear up here in the top right. Click that red skip button. You may need to keep or save this file depending on your browser, and it's 100% safe to do that as long as Forge is in the title, and then Forge will begin downloading. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and we want to move the Forge installer to our desktop just because it's easier to, you know, have it and manage it there. It's not going to stay on your computer forever. So let's go ahead and move that to our desktop. Then on our desktop, what we want to do is create a new folder. So we're going to right-click, create a new folder folder. I'm going to call this modded Minecraft 1.20.6 server because that's what it is. It's a modded 1.20.6 Minecraft server. And then we want to open up our Forge installation. So right click, click on open with, click Java and click OK. But Nick, I can't open this with Java. Well, if you can't open this with Java, then you need to get Java 21. Java 21 is now required for Minecraft servers and mods in 1.20.6. So if you don't have Java 21, which you probably don't, this just happened, you need to go download it. Luckily, this guide goes over everything you need to know. Just come here, click download, and then you want to select Windows and download the x64 installer. That'll download an installation program, run that, Install Java 21, you're good to go, except you may need to run the jar fix. This is going to take the jar files on your computer and link them to Java 21, making them work together. 
But if later on you can't start your server, it's because you have Java, don't have Java 21. Even if you can install Forge, you may not have Java 21 later on and still have issues. So let's go ahead and once you've got Java 21, open up Forge. Right click on it, click on Open With, click Java and click OK. That's going to open up the Forge installer where first we need to install Forge locally. So click Install Client, click OK. It'll go through, download and do that. Then we want to open up the Forge installer again. Same thing with Java and then we want to click Install server here. This is going to create a red box. That's good. Click the three dots here and then we want to find the folder we created on our desktop. Modded Minecraft 1.20.6 server. Right there it is. Click open. That red box goes away and click OK. It's not going to install the server files we need into this folder for a Forge server. So we just kind of sit back and let it do that. Once it's finished, it will come up and say that it has successfully downloaded the Minecraft server. Click OK and it will close out of that. And we can actually delete that Forge installer now. And when we open up the modded Minecraft server folder, we'll see all of this, right? This is all the information for your, or not only the information, all the files for your Minecraft server. To start your server, just double click on this run.bat file. Now, it's gonna fail, but it should generate some stuff in the background here, specifically the Minecraft EOL which right here it is. As you can see, you need to agree to the EULA, press any key to continue. We can do that, it will close out of it. If you don't get the EULA.txt when double clicking that run.bat file, you need Java 21. Go back and get it, get Java 21. You may also need to uninstall Java 17. That can be done from your programs and, and like you would uninstall any other program on Windows. But make sure you just have Java 21 on your computer, then double click the run.bat and it will start and you'll get these files. Let's go ahead and open up the eula.txt in notepad. And in here, as long as we agree to the Minecraft eula, we can change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E exactly like that and click file, save. Then we want to double click that run.bat file and the server will now start. Your Forge server is online and you can actually join the server at this point. So we're going to do that, but your friends can't. In order for your friends to join, we'll need to port forward. We're going to go over all that. If you get this pop-up, it is extraordinarily important that you press private and public networks. Make sure both of these are checked and click allow access. If you don't get that pop-up, not a big deal. But there may be an issue later on if your friends can't join the server. If that's the case, we have a guide in the description on how to fix that. Basically, allowing your Java through Windows Defender Firewall. But again, that's all covered in the description in that video. But nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft. But we're not just going to open up vanilla Minecraft here. We need to play Minecraft with Forge in order to join the server. Luckily, we installed Forge already. We already did that. That's what we did at the beginning when we installed Forge as the client. Anyone who joins your server will need Forge installed in order to join. So if we come over here, we have this Forge installation. I'm going to go ahead and play Minecraft using that. And then I'll show you how you can join this server and test it out. To join the server and test it, what we want to do is go into multiplayer here and then we want to click proceed if you need to and we want to add in a brand new server so we're going to click add server here i'm going to name this local connection because this is a local connection and then the server address is going to be local host all one word exactly like that local host and when you click done it's going to resolve the server right there it is and you can double click to join your server you'll see us join in over here on the left hand side now with that being said you're the only person that can join this server it's working it is worth testing before you allow your friends to join join it because otherwise, well, they might not, you might not be able to join it. There might be an issue, something like that. And no reason to do the port forwarding and all that if there is an issue, but very rarely is there an issue at this point. So we are now good to go. We can now port forward. Let's go ahead and do it. So we want to disconnect here, go back and quit the game. And we want to stop our server by coming over here and typing stop in this uh, text area. You can also type it down here, stop and hit enter. And it's not going to close out of the server properly, making sure everything is saved. Nevertheless, once that's done, we can close out of the server folder and we want to open up the CMD. In the command prompt here, we want to type in IPCONFIG, IPConfig, all one word exactly like that, IPCONFIG, and hit enter. That's going to give us a bunch of numbers here. We want a few numbers from this, so let's go ahead and grab them. Specifically, we want our IPv4 address, which is right here, IPv4. 192.168.1.2 and we want our default gateway. Now I have two default gateways, default gateway. And as you can see here, one is numbers and letters. It's the first one here. It's really long, kind of complicated. Then there's one under that. It's 192.168.1.1. It's pretty easy, right? We want the one that's easy. We want the one that's under it here on the second line with nothing next to it. 192.168.1.1. 
Then we want to take and copy that default gateway and open our browser. And in our browser, what we want to do is open a brand new tab. And up here at the top, where you would type in simplegamehosting.com, the breakdown.xyz, youtube.com, paste in your default gateway. Go ahead and hit enter and it will open up some sort of a login box. Now, this is where you're going to enter your router's username and password. This is different from your Wi-Fi password, but luckily, if you don't know your router's username and password, of course, there's a guide in the description. How to find your router's password goes over method one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to contacting your ISP. Usually people find it by method four, if not even method three. So don't worry. Chances are low you have to contact your ISP, but you might have to. And once you've got your router's username and password, we can go over here and log in. I'm going to log into my router and then we can port forward. Once you've logged into your router, it'll probably look completely different than what my router looks like. Luckily, we do have a guide in the description how to port forward on any router. This guide up here at the top, this video specifically, really, really good and worth checking out and diving into because it goes over how to port forward on the most popular routers that are out there today. Even if your router's not in that video, it's worth watching because, well, a lot of routers are very similar. So you'll probably pick up the terms and things that you might want to look for in your router. Now, in my router, it's going to be an advanced and then it's going to be an advanced again, and then in port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be called apps and gaming. It could be in the advanced tab, the administration tab. It could be in a security tab, a firewall tab. It could be in a tab called NAT gaming, NAT gaming, or NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. There's tons of different places it could be, but overall, you're looking for port forwarding or port forwarding slash port triggering. Once you've found it, what you want to do is add a new port forward. Now, for me, this is called add a custom service, but you you might have just a big list of empty boxes. If that's the case, use the first box on the big list. But nonetheless, as you can see here, we now have the service name or the ID for the port forward. This is just what it's for. And this is for the Minecraft server. Then for the protocol, we can set TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP. Either way, you want to make sure that the protocol you select is both. It might actually be the word both for the protocol, by the way. So that's perfectly normal. If for whatever reason you can't select both, do this twice. Once for TCP, then once for UDP. For the external port, the internal port for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, enter 25565 exactly like that. So external ports, 25565, internal ports, 25565. For the internal or local IP address, that's going to be that IPv4 address we found earlier. So 192.168.1.2. You may not have the option for a local or an internal IP address and instead have a big list of all the devices connected to your internet. In that case, you want to select the device that you're starting your Minecraft server on. At this point though, I'm done. I can click apply, click save. But some of you might need an external or outside IP address for your port forward. Luckily, every person watching this video needs their external public IP address because that's what your friends are going to use to join. So let's go ahead and get that from this link in the description down below. Now, all you can see here is 4.3, but you can also see all the information someone can get from your IP, which is why it's super important to keep this as private as possible. Now, let's just go ahead and click to copy this here. And then once we've got that, we can go ahead and go back to our port forward if we need it, paste it in here, save it. But if you didn't need it, send it to your friends because they can now join your server. Well, that is as soon as you start your server, and we can do that by opening this up here and double clicking on that run.bat file. While this is opening, I'll also go ahead and open up Minecraft with Forge. So here we are, Minecraft is open. We can go ahead and click on multiplayer, click proceed, and we want to add a server. I'm going to name this public IP because it's our public IP that we're using to join. And we want to paste in the public IP. All you can see here is 43, just to confirm it's the same one as earlier. But again, you don't want to give this out to everybody, which means uh, we don't want to give it out to everyone on the internet. Go ahead and click done here and now after a few seconds it will resolve and there we go. Now I know I can join via my public IP. You may not be able to and that's okay as long as your friends can because uh, you're connecting back to yourself. Some internet service providers don't like that and if that's the case just use the local host connection we used at the beginning of the video to join the server. Otherwise, you're good to go at this point. Your friends can join. Things are rocking and rolling. However, if your friends can't join, we have some solutions for that and in the description down below you will find this, which is how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. Most likely, that's why your friends can't join. So this is in the description. It could also be a firewall on your router or an antivirus or something like that, stopping them from joining. We also have how to fix a broken Minecraft server. This goes over modded servers, vanilla servers, all sorts of the different issues you may have. So go check this out if you want to get the most out of managing a Minecraft server and have an idea of when this you could be as soon as it pops up. That's why this guide is here. As far as adding mods, 
We have a guide on that in the description as well, but I'm going to quickly go over that. And there are two main places you can get mods, CurseForge and Moderinth. Generally, both are trusted sources. And when it comes to getting mods, you want to make sure that the mods you get are for the Forge mod loader. So we can come here and select Forge and then are for 1.20.6. You can also filter on Moderinth, but any of these mods could be installed on your server. Some mods are local only. An example is Optifine. If you add Optifine to a server, it's not going to necessarily work. You need to just install that locally in order for things to be set up. You can leave that off the server. Every other mod needs to be added to the server, though. For example, Journey Map goes locally and on the server. Bombs of Plenty goes locally and on the server. Some mods are just local, though. Nevertheless, once you've got your mods downloaded, you can add them to your server. This can be done by opening your server folder, which is going to be right here, and then adding them to this mods folder. Once you've done that, you can go and add them to your local mods folder, which we can access from the mods button right here. They must go in your local mods folder within the .minecraft folder, and go on your server's mods folder right here. Once that's done, restart Minecraft, stop your server and start it back up, and then you're good to go. And yes, even your friends need to install the mods in that local mods folder right here in order for them to be able to join. But nevertheless, that's how you can make your very own modded Minecraft server. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Enjoy your 1.20.6 modded server. We'll see you in the next one. I am out. Peace.